Well, I decided to jump onto this extra cube I have made and start exterior siding cube 2.0. So stay tuned and see what we put on the first side and how simple and easy and inexpensive this one is. All right, I know we only have one more side left on our exterior flooring cube, but I'm still debating what I want to put on that last side. And if you guys have any input on that, let me know either here in the comments or over on the Facebook page. But when I started doing the cubes again, I had mentioned that I originally had done an exterior wall finishes cube uh, several years ago on the channel. And it got damaged and I had to throw it out, so I never moved it. So I wanted to recreate that um, with some of the same wall finishes, but maybe some new ones. And I asked if there was interest in seeing some of those recreated and seeing me make the new cube. And enough of you said, yeah, we want to see it, see what you do this time, even if it's some of the same stuff. So we're going to start that today. I have my cube. I am going to do my favorite way to do stucco finish. It's kind of a loosely a stucco finish. And this works really well inside too for a dollhouse. But it's really cheap to do and really fun and really easy. So I need what you need is some base paint, so like a primer coat. And for that, I'm actually using this Dollar Tree paint today. I think it's going to work just fine. And you need cheap Kleenexes. Make sure they don't have little flowers on them or other little designs. You want really cheap, really fine, really smooth ones. No little, you know, cutesy designs. And you're going to kind of tear, start by tearing that up a little bit because this is going to get kind of messy. Like a lot of our projects, it's going to get kind of messy. And I'm going to kind of tear up and do split it up if it's too, like I think you saw me pull the two layers apart there. So I've got single layer. But I like the Kleenex or facial tissue because it's nice and soft. So it makes a really pretty finish. All right, so I've got a brush and I've got paint. I put this paint in this container in case I don't do this all in one sitting. That way I can put a lid on this and not have to pour the paint back in the jar and then back out again. So start by coating your area with some acrylic paint. Then take your, your paper and kind of just put it on there. Not too much. And you, it will kind of mute it down. The paint's going to kind of seal it down and make it be a little flatter than it looks now. I've used this on several different projects over the years, and I love how it looks when it's done. And... Um, I'm going to try painting it a little differently this time than I do sometimes. But it looks kind of like kind of like stucco, kind of like really old plaster, like the in really old houses. You could even like I said, you can do this on the inside too. And it makes it bumpy and lumpy and it's it's just a really neat neat finish and it's great this one is a really good one if you've made a dollhouse or a room box or whatever, and maybe your what you used for the walls wasn't as smooth as you would have liked, or maybe your where you put pieces of wood together like in the corners or wherever if you had to you know like use more than one sheet of wood to get where you needed to go. If you've got flaws in there in your structure, this will cover it up really well. It would really disguise those errors and make them look, make them blend together. Let's go a little heavier on your your wrinkles on your paper on that's those spots. So that's really all there is to this is you just lay down a little bit of like a primer coat of paint, lay a piece of single layer of tissue over it. Do make sure it's a single layer because if it's two layers it can pull apart as it dries and you'll have problems. And if it feels like there's air underneath the piece, really punch it down with your brush and work that air out. 
So I'm just going to finish coating this side of this cube. And when this is all dry, which quite frankly, it's late afternoon right now, so I'll probably be back to this tomorrow morning. I'll come back and we'll start adding a paint finish to it. So I'll see you then. Oh, and there will be pictures of the different steps in the blog post, so be sure and hop over there. But I will see you in a moment. All right, this is dried overnight, so it's thoroughly dried, and I love how it looks. It's just, it's wrinkly, but it's got some spots that aren't. It, it gives me the old looking wall of a house that's maybe been vacant or something for a while. That's what I'm looking for on this. And I'm going to do a painting technique on it. So I want to do a base coat of a cream color. I don't have any cream left in the, in the bottle I've got but I needed cream paint for another project yesterday, so I mixed this up. This is just some white craft paint. I don't remember which bottle I grabbed. I grabbed, I think it was an Anita's, but I don't know for sure. And, because I've got like three almost empty bottles of white craft paint. And then I just put a couple of drops of the palest yellow I have. And I'm going to brush that on. I may need two coats, because I'm not sure how much of this is going to soak in, but I'm going to put this on when I've got a coat I'm happy with. I will come back and it will have to be thoroughly dry. And then we can start aging this and making it look even older and more decrepit. So I'll see you then. All right, my paint is fairly dry. It's really humid here. I'm having a lot of trouble getting it to dry, but we're gonna go on with this anyway. So this is, it's now a nice creamy, yellowy, creamy color. And right here what I have is a wash. What I did, I took some of my burnt umber paint, I mixed in just a little bit of a bright orange, a little bit of a dark red. My goal was to make a brown that looked like mud. And then I added a lot of water. Um, the paint barely covered the bottom of this container and there's probably about an eighth of an inch of water in here. Gives you kind of an idea of the proportions I've got there. And now I'm just going to use a big brush and I'm gonna work in a small area. And I've got both a paper towel <clears throat> and a wet wipe here. I'm not sure which I'm gonna use. Probably the paper towel will do it. I wanna grunge it up a little. Now if I was doing this on a dollhouse, I would probably go not as much under the eaves and then I would let it be darker in some places and maybe we can replicate some of like lines and stuff but let's start by getting the whole surface this will take some of the edge off of that yellow that's in our cream kind of mute that down a little bit I made the cream a little more yellowy than I wanted it to be in the end so that it would, because I knew I would mute it down by putting this brown over it. I mean, basically we are we're, we're just putting a muting coat over it. I'm gonna need another paper towel since that is so wet. Kind of put this on here. Kind of let it pool for a few minutes on the surface. And then blot. And keep repeating that until it's the, the way you want it to be. On a dollhouse, one of the things we might do is maybe from a corner of a window, put some enough that it would run down. And now I've got a drip mark. And then kind of blot that a little bit too. So you can add a lot of character with just a wash. So I'm going to let this dry. I don't want to overdo it to begin with. I am going to wash my brush out, but I'm going to leave this here because this is going to stay liquid for a long time because it's mostly water. 
When this dries, I'll come back and we'll take a look and see if it needs more. So I'll be right back. All right, now this is fairly dry and I think I'm gonna add just a little more color just around all the edges. Because I like that look when it comes to aging things. So I'm gonna go all the way around and then come back and blot it because that way it can kind of soak in a little bit and be a little darker. And it's a really, I'm going to put another coat on, I think. It's a good thing I don't have anything on the other sides of this brick be block because I am dripping badly. Um, I'm going to go around twice just to make sure I have good coverage. Now, you'll notice I didn't stir this. I'm just using the water from the very top. All right, that looks pretty saturated. Let me get a clean paper towel. I'm going to replace my paper towels soon. Plotted a little too much there, so let's go back. I'm just going to kind of do the wet edge, so kind of what I would call the leading edge there. I'm going to let that dry, and when this is dry, I'll come back, we'll see how it looks, see if we want to adjust it, and talk about the project. All right, and here we have a very, very aged looking, what looks like a stucco or something similar, some, some kind of surface like that that could go on the outside or even the inside of a dollhouse. Um, and I'll talk on the blog post about where I would do some of the different aging. Now, since I used craft paint, I am going to put a coat of matte Mod Podge on. And since I'm almost out, I'm just going to do that and hope like heck there is enough to spread. I don't want much, but, and my brush is a little damp from washing it yesterday, so it should help it to spread out. So I am going to get this spread out. This will seal it and give it just a little bit more of a finished look. If I had used uh, interior house paint like I usually do when I'm doing it outside of a dollhouse, then I wouldn't need to do this step. I would be done after I did the aging. I This step would be totally optional. But with the craft paint, I, I would rather add this because it makes it a little more durable and it looks better. So when this dries, I'll come back and we can take a look at this first side of our exterior siding cube. All right, with the exception of one little spot right there, this is this Mod Podge is dry. And this side of our exterior siding cube 2.0 is complete. Like I said, be sure and check the blog post because I'm going to go into a little more detail about when in construction I would use a wall like this, why I aged it like I did, things like that. But I think this is a good start. Now, if you have specific siding ideas that you want to see me demonstrate on this cube, be sure and either put it in the comments below or over on the Facebook page and let me know because I still have five more sides and I haven't made any hard and fast decision decisions yet about what I'm going to do on each side. So if you'd like some input, if there's something you want to do on a dollhouse or a room box or something and you don't know how to do it, let me know and I'll see if I can figure it out for you and we'll put it on one of the sides. Remember, this is for exterior siding. We've still got one side on the flooring, exterior flooring, patio, decking type cube to do. And pretty soon we're going to start a roofing cube. So those will be sprinkled in and throughout uh, for Sunday videos as I need to come up with something like this week. I'll talk on the blog post about I had something planned and there's one element for it I can't get. So that one had to go on hold, so I decided to start this. 
But I want to thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure and hit the like button. Leave me comments. Uh, share the video with your friends if they're into dollhouse miniatures. Let's grow the channel some more. Let's get more people watching and grow the channel. So if you haven't subscribed and you do enjoy my content, be sure to hit that sub subscription button and the notification bell so that you know when I put up a new video. And like I said, thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate it and I will talk to you next time. Bye.